Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and I am back with a video checking out four new cartridges from Evercade. Every couple months, I fire up the Evercade Versus console, and I'm always blown away that this thing continues to grow. Now there are over 60 cartridges announced for the system and over 500 games. Pretty, pretty impressive, especially if you consider that they still manage to keep each new cartridge at around $25 or less. And so today we're gonna check out four of them. Now these were sent to me for review. However, nobody is telling me what to say or do in this video. All of the opinions are my own. And uh, starting with the Tomb Raider trilogy here. And the appeal of the Evercade is that you get to get these games in their physical form. And it's a real cartridge. It contains the PlayStation 1 versions of all three games. And as you see here, it also comes with a full color manual. And you guys know I love manuals. This is so awesome because you get a little bit of a backstory of uh, the company Crystal Dynamics that made the original games. Uh, plus you get some insight into playing the game as well as the controls, some tips and tricks, all that sort of stuff. Which by the way is gonna come in very handy when I get a little later into this video and we start talking about some of the games that came out on computers. You're gonna need that manual. And like I said, these are the original PlayStation versions of the games. They are not the, the remasters that came out a couple years ago, maybe a year ago, I forget now. Uh, so these are the ones that you would have got on the PlayStation and they appear to run you know, just fine. I did notice that when I was playing through all three of these, Tomb Raider 1 probably performs a little better than say Tomb Raider 3, but that's probably because 3 is, it's more detailed, probably pushing more polygons. That's kind of my, you know, that's my guess with those. Uh, you also are getting the full motion intros as well. And then notice that they have the uh, the original aspect ratio too. Now, one thing to consider when playing these original Tomb Raider games is that these games had tank controls and they haven't aged very well. Now, it's not impossible to play these games today. I mean, I played and beat Tomb Raider 1 and 2 back in the day, just fine with tank controls. But going back to them today, yeah, these controls, they take a little bit getting used to, definitely. To give you an example, here's me playing the beginning of Tomb Raider 2, and uh, it's really annoying trying to get these early platform jumps. The thing is that there are arguments on both sides because a lot of people actually really like the precision of tank controls, and I get it, and you can certainly get used to it, but you know, it's definitely weird in the beginning. However, I learned that Evercade upgraded the firmware uh, of their operating system to version four, and they now have support for third-party analog controllers. Now it's currently in beta, but I tried it out with my wired Xbox 360 controller and yeah, it worked as expected. So here is Tomb Raider one with that 360 controller and it's definitely an improvement. But again, you're still dealing with tank controls. Plus, it's also very sensitive. So, you know, you see me here weaving back and forth when I'm pushing Laura forward. That's kind of annoying, but you can get used to it. Here's me also in Tomb Raider 2, again, using a 360 controller, trying to make that jump. And frankly, I was getting frustrated here, even with the analog controller. Now that said, Tomb Raider 3 is a bit better with analog controls. Uh, I guess at the time, I don't remember, but I guess actually it shipped with more analog support, which is cool, but it's not great. I mean, your mileage <laughs> may vary. You know, your frustration may vary depending on, on how you feel about tank controls. As you probably noticed, it has very crisp visuals with the pixel perfect mode, which is the default and what I'm gonna use for most of this video. But you can also turn on subtle and also maybe more noticeable scan lines if you wish, if you're trying to get back to probably what it really looked like playing this back on a CRT. You can also fill more of the screen and also stretch the image if you want to fill up more of your widescreen television. Now, I'll be honest, these games today feel pretty dated and I'm not sure I would actually go back and probably play them today. You know, obviously they're classics for a reason. They are groundbreaking games. I love them when they first came out. But if I was to go and play, especially Tomb Raider 1 today, 
I would lean towards playing the Tomb Raider Anniversary Edition because that game was updated with better controls and also better visuals. But again, your mileage may vary. Now this cartridge I was very excited for because I haven't played either of these games in a while. And just like before, you get the games physically on the cartridge with a great manual. And we're gonna check out Blood Omen Legacy of Cain. Now it has been a long time since I played this and I forgot that this is a top-down action adventure game, kind of similar to, I guess, maybe Diablo. In this game, you hack and slash your way through dungeons and forests. You'll gather pickups to help you along with your quest. You're gonna be solving environmental puzzles. And one of my favorite features is that you feed on humans for blood to restore your health that never gets old because obviously you're playing a vampire, right? And diving back into this game for this video, I was pleasantly surprised how fun this game still is today. It's a little dated, you know, it's, it, uh, you know, it's just, like I said, it's just a little dated, but I found it to be very easy to get into. It still plays really well. Yeah, I like this game a lot. The sanctuary spell enables me to travel to my crypt where the soil of my grave provides me respite. I often resort to this when I am weak and need nourishment. And then you have the sequel, which is Legacy of Kane's Soul Reaver. So this is a fully 3D game, but unlike Tomb Raider, the controls here are way more intuitive and also, you know, more familiar to modern gamers. Even with the standard Evercade controller that doesn't have a thumbstick, I found this game to be completely playable and very enjoyable uh, just as is. So yeah, I like this game a lot. I still think it holds up today. And for this game, I was kind of curious what the scan lines would do for it because these early polygon games, I do think benefit from having those scan lines. It kind of smooths out that roughness, the, the harshness of those early polygons. And I have to say, I think this looks pretty good. I should also mention that one of the nice things about the Evercade is that it supports quick saves and loads at any time, which uh, if you remember back into you know the early PlayStation era, that can be one of the annoying things is that you have to try to survive till you get to a save point. Well, again, on the Evercade, you don't have to worry about that at all. You can save it at any time, which is really nice. So yeah, I really like this Evercade cartridge a lot. I put a lot of time into this. I got sucked back into both games. Highly recommended. Now let's check out something completely different. These next two cartridges are based on retro computers. And I'm gonna start with the Bitmap Brothers Collection Volume 2. But it, I thought it was kind of interesting because these cartridges came with a warning on them, noting that these games that are on these originally came out on floppy disk. And at times they would have load times, right? You know, we're talking late eighties, early nineties here. And yes, you had to deal with load times. And so, you know, obviously they're gonna be faster on the Evercade than the original hardware. However, there are going to be load times you're gonna to have to deal with here. And specifically, sometimes the screen will go blank when it's quote unquote loading. And so they just wanted to warn people that no, that it didn't crash, just give it a couple seconds and it should be fine. With that said, let's go ahead and start with Cadaver. So this is a 3D isometric adventure slash RPG that originally came out on the Amiga computer. I had not played this before. I'd heard of it, but I didn't own an Amiga when I was growing up as a kid. And so this was not on my radar at all. And so I was playing this for the first time. And in this game, you play as a thief that's raiding through these five stories of a castle, trying to steal as much treasure as possible. However, you know, there's gonna be monsters and traps and puzzles that are trying to get in your way while you're doing that. And this was interesting playing this because it's really weird to control these games with a you know modern controller because you have action items that you can select down there on the left and you need to do that a lot right because this is a you know adventure game and i gotta tell you without reading the manual or any instructions you'd be very lost here and so again it's it's really nice that they have a good manual here to help you along and at least get you going in, in a game like this because otherwise i think you'd be completely lost and it's the same thing with the sequel that's also included on this cartridge. And so, yeah, I'd, I'll be curious to know, you know, if people are nostalgic for it and want to play it this way. Um, 
Again, it, I think it'd be much better if you actually had a keyboard or some other way to do it. You can bring up a virtual keyboard, but again, it's not the same. So I don't know, let me know if you remember playing Cadaver as a kid. Here's a game that's pretty legendary called Gods. So this is a 2D platforming classic and uh, this is a pretty tough game, but it definitely has some gorgeous Amiga graphics. You play as a hero that dares to take on the gods in ancient Greece. And uh, yeah, so this is obviously just like your typical 2D platforming game. The one thing I would tell people that's kind of interesting that I forgot about is that many times back in the day, especially on some of these really old computers, you would use an Atari 2600 joystick. You didn't have to, but I know myself on my Commodore 64, I did. And because of that, you only had one button. Again, not every setup was like this, but a lot of times you play games. And the reason why I mentioned that is because games like God and some of these other ones on a show, they have you jumping by pushing up on the, the joystick. You can also use a button to do that, but it's very weird going and playing these games today because you'll accidentally jump sometimes simply by slightly pushing up on the D-pad or you know, if you're using an analog controller. So just be aware that's not a bug. It's actually by design because again, those early controllers it may only have one button. And so they, to get around that, they had to make jump pushing up on the joystick. Again, very weird. I probably sound like an old guy. <laughs> the younger gamers don't even understand this, but yeah, it was a thing. Speaking of which, here is another 2D platforming game called Magic Pockets. And I found this game to be a little bit easier to control and possibly understand, again, without having to dive into the manual and kind of getting some of the backstory and you know some of the, the nuances of it. But yeah, overall, pretty decent game. Here is the Chaos Engine 2, and this is a competitive action game. Now, the original Chaos Engine is considered an absolute classic, and this one is also highly regarded as well. It's very similar to the original, but now you have a split screen, and you can play either with a friend, which is great because on the Evercade Versus, it supports that, uh, or you can play as the computer. And uh, yeah, I found this game to be pretty fun. It's arcadey and easy to get into, and it's, yeah, it's cool. Here is a game that I owned on the PC. It's called Z, kind of a weird name, but this is a real-time strategy game that at the time, this game was amazing. Basically, this is kind of like Warcraft 2, if you played that real-time strategy game also back in the day. Uh, Z, I don't remember if Z came before or after it, but I know it's around that time. And unfortunately, while it had fans like me, I don't think it really caught on in a big way. Like I said, fans like me remember this game. They remember it as being really fun, but it's kind of slipped into obscurity at this point, you know, dare I say even a hidden gem. And so I was really surprised to see it included on this cartridge because I do think this game holds up when it comes to the gameplay. I really do. I, again, I was having a lot of fun with it. The only odd thing I was struggling with is using a controller for a game like this. It's really designed to use a mouse, right? Because in these type of games, you want to highlight and group all of your units and move them around the map. And it's just a little awkward to use that with, you know, a standard controller. You can do it. You see me doing it here. It's fine. But just be aware. That said, if you like these kind of games, definitely check this one out. And then here we have the Thalamus Collection Volume 1. There are 11 games in here. And I'll admit, I was not familiar with most of these. I wonder if they were popular over in Europe, because there's definitely kind of a North America versus Europe thing going on when it comes to the Commodore 64. Uh, a lot of games that were popular over there didn't necessarily become popular here. That's my guess. I don't know if that's true or not, but I was excited to check this out. Again, a bunch of games that I really didn't have a lot of history with. Starting with Armalite. So I love a good shoot 'em up and this is a horizontal shoot 'em up for the Commodore 64. And uh, yeah, I found this game to be pretty fun and it's a good looking game. I like how you can lock and unlock that satellite ship that follows you. So that adds a little bit of strategy to this game, especially since they just throw a ton of enemies at you. Creatures is a game I'd heard of, and I know a lot of people really like this game a lot. Uh, this is my first time playing it here, 
And it's cool to check out, you know, a potential Commodore 64 classic platforming game. And I have to say, I like it, but I also find this game to be very difficult, especially since enemies seem to take multiple hits to kill. And that's kind of annoying. I, I kind of feel like that makes the game more difficult than it probably needs to be. However, you can hold down the attack button. Uh, that way you have fire breath, which I learned helps. That also came from the manual, which is good. <laughs> so I can see why people like this game, but just be aware that, yeah, Creatures 1 and 2, they're, they're tough games. Next up is Hawkeye, and I found this game to be a pretty fun run and gun game. And I feel like it controls really well, has a nice difficulty, and I also think it's one of the better games on this cartridge. I was able to jump into it, not get too frustrated because I wasn't you know, familiar with it, and just have some fun running, shooting, jumping. Yeah, it's a cool game. Oh man, next up is Heat Seeker. And this game is weird. This is really, really weird. So this game takes place on an alien planet and the story involves these magical plants that hold the lifeblood and memories of the people. And you want to make the plants bloom by draining all the heat for some reason. And you do this while piloting this leg with a probe. I can't make this stuff up. It's so bizarre. And you guys are seeing the footage. It's really weird, right? So what you're doing is you're hopping around on this leg and then you'll stop and then you can eject the probe to go into the fire that will absorb, I guess it's energy. And then you take that ball back to the leg and deposit the energy. And then I, it, there's like, I think you have to do six of them on a, on a level or something like that, six or eight, and then you can move on. I mean, it's weird. <laughs> it's really, really weird. But also too, I can, I can kind of appreciate just how creative it is. So, and this is actually, you know, not the worst game. I was getting into it a little bit. So yeah, check it out if you want something completely different. Hunter's Moon Remastered is from 2018, and it's an update to an arcade shooter that came out obviously years ago. And the premise here is pretty interesting. So you can pilot your ship in all these different directions, you know, all four directions, and the shields are guarding the star cells that you want to collect. But as you see here, they're constantly regenerating. So you have to shoot the, the shields down, sneak in, grab the star cell, and then get enough of those to where you can move on to the next area. I thought this was actually a pretty interesting premise, not too difficult in the beginning, so it's not gonna be super frustrating. You can kind of learn how it plays. So yeah, I actually ended up liking this game. Here is Summer Camp. So this is another 2D platforming game that has some potential, but the controls that you use on your mouse, they're not great. It's actually pretty hard to be fairly precise with this controls, I felt. Uh, there's a lot of places where you jump and you're completely blindsided by enemies. And to make matters worse, you die in one hit. So this is one of those early 2D platforming games that's going to probably test your uh, your patience. Uh, you could get frustrated like I was. I was like, I don't know if I like this game, man. I'm sure I'd be better if I learned the, the levels and, you know, just got, got good, essentially. But... Yeah, I don't know about this one. And then here's another game in that series called Winter Camp. And this one is really bizarre because, well, first of all, when I started this game, it, I didn't even know what to do. I was like, what is happening here? There's no instruction whatsoever. So again, thankfully there's that manual. I read that and I was like, oh, well, the first part of this game is a rhythm game where you have to rock the D-pad back and forth to rhythm, basically controlling the little icon down at the bottom. I won the first race. I tried the second race probably four times, couldn't figure it out. I was, I felt like I was going to break the controller. I was like, nah, not for me. I, I ended up skipping this one. Nobby the Aardvark, another 2D platforming game that again, I feel like just suffers from kind of bad controls, frankly. You know, we're used to being able to have fairly precise controls and to go back and play some of these early computer games, it's frustrating. You know, the, the timing has to be absolutely perfect. And I get it, man. I know people love these games and I used to play them 
I used to play a lot of games just like this on my Commodore 64 with way more patience, but coming back to them today, pretty rough. So again, just know what you're getting into if you if you try taking on some of these games today. So there you go, guys. There's a look at four new cartridges for the Evercade. And uh, if you couldn't tell, actually, it was the Blood Omen and Soul Reaver cartridge that I loved the most. That's actually going to get the most play, I think, out of all four of these. But what I love about Evercade is that they do something that, frankly, nobody else is doing. They're creating physical versions and, more importantly, I think they dig deep into gaming history. They touch on games that a lot of people just either forgot about or don't care about, and they're kind of resurrecting them for a new audience, which I think is awesome. And so yeah, while I wasn't crazy about some of those Amiga and C64 games, some of them I did like, and I really appreciate that they are out there, again, you know, licensing them. They're all fully licensed, physically, put out there on cartridge and they're doing manuals. And yeah, I think that's pretty awesome. So I would love to know what you guys think. Do you have an Evercade and have you continued to buy new cartridges for it? I'm up to, I want to say 50 cartridges for my Evercade. So my collection's pretty decent and I was checking it out. I was checking out some of those other cartridges for this review that I hadn't played in a while. And again, it's amazing. It's amazing the variety they have. So there's there's definitely something for everybody. But anyways, guys, thank you very much for watching my channel. Thank you for subscribing and take care.